Now then, you sport deep divers. Let me start by saying the British now and throughout history haven't been perfect. Far from it. And indeed, I am ashamed of some of the things my country has been involved with over time. Luckily, my channel is about sport and so we don't have to get into that here. As ever, a bit of groundwork for those who need to know. The British Empire at its height was the largest in history and for over a century was the foremost global power. By 1913, the British Empire held sway over 400 million people, nearly a quarter of the world's population at the time. And by 1920, it covered 24% of the Earth's total land area. The sun is said never to have set on the British Empire. In simple terms, Great Britain is often used to refer to England, Scotland and Wales. It's not called Great because everything is really amazing. You can easily Google the reason why it's called Great Britain, but we are famous for many wonderful things and also inventing. Watch this montage quickly and you will realise exactly what I mean. English language, signposts, Ben Nevis, the electric motor, Portland cement, Stonehenge, gardens, stainless steel, the telegraph, Peaky Blinders, the royal family, the first flight, the telephone, Robin Hood, the Loch Ness Monster, St George, castles, Winston Churchill, Buckingham Palace, the hovercraft, Oxford, Big Ben, queuing, the tin can, the Bessemer process, the thermos flask, the turbojet engine, Harry Potter, the pneumatic tyre, pubs, Adele, Shakespeare, phone boxes, cathedrals, whiskey, Winnie the Pooh, the underground, the chocolate bar, carbonated water, fish and chips, street art, Glastonbury, the match, Cambridge, sense of humour, the weather, black cabs, Stephen Hawking, the steam engine, socialising, the hydrogen cell, linoleum, the vaccine and immunology, the Beatles, the fire extinguisher, Morris dancing, James Bond, cat's eyes, cash machines, afternoon tea, the World Wide Web, the guillotine, the lawnmower, the light bulb, the railway, the automatic kettle, macadam roads, the power loom, Dolly the sheep, and sport. Now that list is just about the best of Great Britain, but we have also been associated with some not so great achievements. Here is some of the worst. The weather, hooligans, drinking, cars, complaining, intolerance to other sections of society, bad eating habits, being too pessimistic, traffic jams, rudeness, too nationalistic, lazy, and some of us have bad teeth. So the British invented sport, I said. What gives me the right to make such a bold statement? I know sports have been around for many thousands of years and have evolved over time into what they are now. However, Great Britain was the first place to develop what we would see today as codified, organised and commercialised sports. So what we can say for certain is the British invented modern sports. However, even in sport we haven't always got it right and I have no idea how welly wanging, bog snorkelling and cheese chasing are not Olympic sports, but for some reason they haven't really caught on. The sports story begins in earnest in the 18th century, when Great Britain was the first nation to become an industrial, capitalist economy where people had disposable income and the time to spend it. There was also a greater understanding about the benefits of sport and physical activity on health. So let's just see how significant the British influence was in the development of sport around the world. If I just got a list of the top 10 sports by participation, such as the one here by Real Buzz, you could accuse me of bias and tell me other sports that could or should be on their list. So I thought I'd get a second opinion. I went to Baller Status, who have a top 10 sports by followers, and there are obvious similarities. I can hear some of you crying out, but there are nearly 8,000 sports in the world, so how can you use just the top 10? What I did was, I thought I'd use Biggest Global Sports Top 20 of their list that goes down to 100. They use their own ranking and point system. I think few can argue that these lists summarise the majority of the top 10 or so sports in the world. So here we go, investigating the British influence in sports. Let's start with the biggest worldwide sport, both played and viewed. The Chinese, Italian, Japanese, South and Central Americans, Ancient Greeks and Romans, the Persians, Vikings and many more all played a ball game that resembled football. 
In Britain too, there are records of football being played for hundreds of years. However, in 1863, the first football association was founded in England. And on the 26th of October of the same year, rules for the modern game were first laid down. The British on their travels took football to many countries and the rest, as they say, is history. Some say cricket is as British as it gets. The first evidence of cricket being played was recorded in the year 1550 by pupils of the Royal Grammar School in Guildford. The world's first cricket club was formed in Hambledon in the 1760s. The beginnings of modern cricket is said to be in 1787 when the Marylebone Cricket Club, also known as the MCC, was created. At the meeting for the Football Association, several clubs were unhappy over the removal of two draft rules. The first rule to go was the one which allowed for running with the ball in hand, and secondly, obstructing a run by hacking, tripping and holding. Legend has it that on one day in 1823, a schoolboy named William Webb Ellis decided to run with the ball rather than retiring to kick it, as was the normal mode of play in rugby school football matches. Other clubs followed this lead and did not join the FA, but instead, in 1871, formed the Rugby Football Union. In 1457, in an attempt to encourage archery practice, which was being neglected. The history of basketball began with its invention in 1891, in Springfield, by the Canadian-American physical education instructor James Naismith, as a less injury-prone sport than American football. William George Morgan was the inventor of volleyball, originally called Mintonet, a name derived from the game of badminton, which he later agreed to change to better reflect the nature of the sport. Morgan met James Naismith, the inventor of basketball, while he was studying at Springfield College in 1892. Like Naismith, Morgan pursued a career in physical education at the YMCA. The Young Men's Christian Association was founded on the 6th of June 1844 by Sir George Williams in London. So there is certainly a bit of British influence there, but we're not going to claim basketball or volleyball. Hockey-like games involving sticks and balls have been played for thousands of years. Records show that the form of hockey was played in Egypt 4,000 years ago and in Ethiopia around 1000 BC. Hockey in England in the 17th and 18th century consisted of whole villages playing the game with the objective of hitting the ball into the opposing village's common ground. Teams often consisted of up to 100 players and games occasionally lasted several days or so. The violent nature of the sport meant that broken arms and legs were nothing unusual for participants. The game we know today emerged at Eton College in England in the 1860s when the first rules were written down. Further rules were written in 1875 when the first hockey association was formed. At this time, British soldiers were taking the game around the world and in Canada, where frozen fields were more common than grass, it was also played on ice. Great Britain began acquiring territory in what is now Canada in the 1600s. The origins of ice hockey have long been debated. The International Ice Hockey Federation say the first game of organised ice hockey was played in Montreal in 1875. Many others also consider ice hockey's first rules to have been published in 1877 by the Montreal Gazette. However, there were organised ice hockey or bandy games played on skates in England before this and the earliest rules were also published in England. Canada made important contributions to the game from the 1870s onwards. And by the early 20th century, Canadian rules had reshaped the sport. Baseball evolved in the mid-18th century from older bat and ball games such as rounders that were already being played in England. The game was taken by immigrants to North America where it developed. Badminton was originally called Pune in India during the 18th century and the British Army officers stationed there brought the game back to England in the 1860s. The army men introduced the games to friends but the new sport was launched in Great Britain at a party in 1873 given by the Duke of Beaufort at his country place named Badminton in Gloucestershire. In 1877 the modern rules were laid down, the Bath Badminton Club was set up and standardised the rules that still guide the sport today. Lawn tennis was invented in 1859 by Major Thomas Harry Jem and his friend Batista Pereira, a Spanish merchant who both lived in Birmingham. They played it first on a lawn in the Edgebaston area, indeed in the garden of friends of mine, which is absolutely insane to think that the tennis court size that everybody plays on around the world literally is the size of their lawn. In 1874, Major Walter C. Wingfield patented the equipment and rules for the game very similar to modern lawn tennis. 
The earliest known form of table tennis was first played in Victorian England. In the early 1880s, British army officers in India and South Africa used lids from cigar boxes as paddles and rounded corks from wine bottles as balls, with a row of books set up across the middle of a table to form the net. James Gibb, an Englishman who visited the United States in 1900, brought some hollow celluloid balls home and began playing indoor tennis with friends using the new balls. Gibb apparently came up with the name Ping Pong, represented by the sound of the balls hitting the paddle and then hitting the table. The game of snooker was invented by the British man, Colonel Sir Neville Chamberlain of the British Army Garrisons of India. The game is believed to be a mix of other billiard games, mainly English billiards. The new billiard sport of snooker surfaced around 1875. It wasn't until the early 1900s that the game evolved into the game it is now. Played by the army officers and aristocracy stationed in India, the game grew in complexity and has pretty much stayed the same ever since. Swimming surfaced as a competitive recreational activity in the 1830s in England. In 1828, the first indoor swimming pool, St George's Baths, were open to the public. By 1837, the National Swimming Society was holding regular swimming competitions in six artificial pools built around London. Athletics sees its origins with the Greeks in events like the ancient Olympics, but it was really the French and the Baron Pierre de Coubertin who developed modern-day athletics. However, the Baron's influence for sport and physical education for sure was gained in 1883 when he visited England for the first time and studied the programme of physical education at rugby school. He then set out on a quest to give French children what British students already had, sport in education. He would go on to become a leader of the French education reform. Bruce Lee of California is often credited with being the first MMA fighter, but the history of mixed martial arts dates back to the Olympics of the ancient Greece. Mixed martial arts fights originated as hand-to-hand -hand combat, performed as a sport called pancreation. This comes from the Greek words pan and kratos, meaning all powers. The Greek competitors only had two rules, and they were no biting and no eye gouging. Regulated mixed martial arts competitions were first introduced in the United States. The first competition named the Tough Guy Contest was held on March the 20th, 1980, in Pennsylvania. UFC 1 was held on November the 12th, 1993. You could be forgiven for thinking it was the British that started Formula 1, with seven of the current teams based in the UK. However, automobile racing has its roots in the European Grand Prix Championships of the 1920s and 1930s. Though the foundation of modern Formula One began in 1946 with the Fédération Internationale de Automobiles Standardisation of Rules, which was followed by the World Championship of Drivers in 1950. American football's roots stemmed from two sports, soccer and rugby which had enjoyed long-time popularity in many nations of the world. On the 6th of November 1869, Rutgers and Princeton played what was billed as the first college football game. However, it wasn't until the 1880s that Walter Camp, a rugby player from Yale, pioneered rule changes that slowly transformed rugby into the new game of American football. The earliest evidence of boxing rules date back to ancient Greece, where boxing was established as an Olympic game in 688 BC. Boxing evolved from 16th century prize fights, largely in Great Britain. In 1743, Jack Brownton wrote the first code of rules, and 1867 saw the introduction of the Marquis of Queensbury rules. According to historical records, the origin of cycling has its roots in the gardens of the Palais Royal in Paris, France. In 1791, the Comte de Sivrac was spotted riding a rigid two-wheeled contraption called a Salaire Iferi. In 1793, sporting clubs all over Paris began organising frequent races along the famed Champs-Élysées. The Fédération Internationale de Motocyclisme was born from the Fédération Internationale de Clubs Motocyclistes, which was founded in Paris on the 21st of December 1904. The British Autocycle Union was also one of the founding members. In 1906, the FICM was dissolved, but reborn in 1912 with the headquarters located in England. In 1949, the name was changed to the Fédération Internationale Motocyclist, and its headquarters are now in Switzerland. So that completes a summary of the history of the modern version of these sports. 
It is clear that through timing and several other reasons, the British were hugely significant in the development of the most popular sport now played around the world. What do I think would have happened had we not been in the position we were? Maybe if Great Britain didn't exist at all? First of all, I have no idea, but there are lots of potential scenarios. Maybe there will be little or no sport at all now. I don't think so. The human race likes sport and competition. It suits them. I think sports would have been developed, maybe a little differently in the rules and the equipment, but they would definitely be here. I think the same sports would still be around today, just developed by some other nationality. But remember, Great Britain just codified and organised activities that, on the whole, already existed. Maybe the French would have been the driving force, or the Spanish, Portuguese, or maybe even the Dutch. I don't think it would have been the USA, because their country's development happened so relatively late. But if they were, I think there's a real possibility that there would have been some completely different sports on the list. I wonder what you think. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I look forward to reading them. What sport do you think has developed that shouldn't have been as popular as it is? Or what sport do you think should be on the list, and why isn't it? As ever, if I have made any points that need correcting, please do so in the comments below. And probably the greatest present you could give anyone is a copy of my book, Interested in Sport by Tav Claudine, which has thousands of the best sports facts and jokes. If you've enjoyed this film, please smash the like button and consider subscribing. It really helps the channel. Check out some of the many other films that I've made all related to sports.